Hi and welcome to my channel. Guess what? Overseas carers are currently allowed to bring their dependents to the UK. Yes, you've heard this correctly because there are some people that are all stressed out. They're like, oh my goodness, the UK is out of reach for me because I cannot go with my dependents. While you're thinking that way, other people and thousands of carers are bringing their dependents to the UK every single day. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the ways in which carers are bringing dependents to the UK. These are legal, these are legit, and like I say, thousands of people are bringing dependents through this route as carers in the UK. So if you're new to my channel, you're welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, I absolutely do appreciate your time, and I hope that you're finding these videos helpful because I'm all about career progression in the UK, the best easy pathways to move to the UK without spending thousands of pounds going back bankrupt selling everything that you've got you know and moving to this country to then find that you're going to be homeless jobless worse still and stranded in the uk at risk of deportation like thousands of colleagues are at the moment that is the reason why i share this video so if you haven't joined this family hit the subscribe button below because you want to be the first person that is notified when I drop a new video on here every single day. So let me tell you something, by the way, if you're watching this video right now, leave a comment in the comment section below, which country are you watching from? I just want to know, are you in the UK at the moment or are you still out of this country? Because whether you're in the UK or out, this information is crucial for you. Or if you know anybody that can benefit from this, please do me a favor and share this with them. So leave a comment in the comment section below, where are you watching from? which country are you watching from also if you're not aware by the way i do have a free newsletter i've dropped the link in the comment section below you will also see my contact details on there that's my whatsapp number as well as my email address so that if you need one-to-one -one support you're thinking melvis how does this apply to me what about my personal circumstances how do i apply for a job what do i need my cv my qualifications my experiences interview preparation then you can contact me directly Join the newsletter, it's completely free to join and I send that information directly to your inbox. So when it comes to overseas carers, specifically bringing dependents to the UK, there's only one thing that determines whether you can bring your dependent to the UK or not. And we're going to talk about that very, very important factor. But the first thing you need to know is every single person that moved to the UK before the 11th of March 2024 is legally allowed to bring their dependents to the UK irrespective of the type of care job that they have. So that's the first thing that I just want to get out of the way so that we are clear as far as that is concerned. So again, if you're watching this, if you're already in the UK, when did you move to this country? Just leave the dates, you know, in the comment section below if you're somebody who is already in the uk so that's the first thing and the second thing that i'm going to say and one of the most important things is that for you to bring your dependent or not to the uk it depends on the occupation code that you've got on your cos which is a certificate of sponsorship look this is something that is absolutely important it's very crucial many people talk about cos cos they don't really know what cos is and so i'm going to say if you want me to do a detailed video about cos what to look out for how to request particular course from your employer because I've got a lot of experience in this and I have dealt with loads of cases and I can say to you like these things are possible if you leave a comment in the comment section below then I'm more than happy to share that with yourself and by the way if you're not aware I do have a private career coaching program I've dropped a link in the description box below or the about section of this channel you can have a look there at your convenience and my private coaching program is only for the top 1% of people that, like me, are interested and invested in personal and professional development. My coaching program is all about you you know what are your experiences what's the best pathway for you to pursue in the uk if you're looking for carer jobs for example which ones offer visa sponsorship you know which ones don't what are the best employers to go for which ones to avoid your cv what should it be like because it's very very highly competitive at the moment what about your supporting information for example interview preparation what to look out for how to then progress you know from a carer because you don't want to get stuck i always say these carer jobs are entry-level jobs for you to step into the room get into the building get into the country and guess what you need to upgrade yourself that's what it's all about so that's what my coaching program really is about there's quite a lot people that are transitioning into nursing apprenticeships and all of that like i say if you want to know what is in this for you check the comment section as well you can contact me directly to talk about your specific circumstances but back to what we're talking about which is carers bringing dependence to the uk what is the single most important thing we're going to talk about that but one thing just came to my mind 
Another group of carers also that can bring their dependents right now as we speak, irrespective of anything else, are carers that work for the NHS. So if you get a job with the NHS, which is the National Health Service in the UK, you are exempted from the dependent ban. Look, this is something that is huge. Many people are not aware of. Or you may be aware of this or not, depending on when you kind of embarked on this relocation journey. Because I know there are people that started their relocation journey, you know, quite ages ago, for example. And so they will be like, oh, carers are not allowed to bring dependents. But if you're somebody who is new in all of this, you may be very oblivious to the fact that most carers are still allowed to bring dependents. So NHS, which is a national health service, they are exempted from the ban and all Carers that work for the NHS can indeed bring their dependents to the UK. And the best thing about these NHS jobs is that obviously they've also got clinical, non-clinical jobs, which means that you don't need to have any background, no healthcare experience, and you can get in to work for the NHS. I've personally supported hundreds of people who have successfully had jobs with the NHS with from nothing at all. I've had people who've been electricians back in Africa that are now working in the UK, people that have been mechanics, people that have just been selling, you know businesses entrepreneurs from all sorts of sectors so it's a massive advantage but if you're somebody who's got healthcare background obviously that is an added advantage it doesn't mean that it doesn't play a role but you've already got some experience and some exposure in the sector so nhs carers are completely exempted from the ban and all of them can bring dependents you know, irrespective of the job, really. So when you think about getting a job with the NHS, for example, in fact, I'm going to say, what do you know about the NHS? What is your experience about NHS job applications? If you leave a comment in the comment section below, I'm more than happy to provide more information about this. I've shared extensively detailed videos on here about various types of NHS jobs that are currently recruiting, massively offering visa sponsorship to overseas workers. Like I say, if you're part of my private coaching program on Thursday, we're going to go through this in a lot more detail. Those occupation codes, those jobs, what do they need for each one? Because there are some of these jobs that if you don't have a lot of knowledge, a lot of experience and exposure, it can be very, very challenging because, you know, it's just it's just what it is. But let me tell you the most important thing about this. Um, because you watched this video till now, it's only fair that you hear about this. By the way, if you're enjoying this content, hit the like button below. It lets me know that you enjoy content like this and obviously I should do more. Also share this with your friends, loved ones, colleagues. Reassure them, encourage them so that they can continue to apply. It can be very daunting applying for these visa sponsorship jobs. So I always say relatives and friends and colleagues, they need a lot of encouragement because sometimes it can take a lot longer than we would all like it to be. And I know because if you're not aware, by the way, I work as an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the most senior clinical nursing job that there is in the profession. But I started my UK journey as a carer in a nursing home. So I've gone through these processes from, you know, to a student visa, then to a nurse, then visa sponsorship, then indefinitely to remain British passport. I've gone through the entire shebang. And I can tell you it is a very challenging journey, but very worthwhile, very fulfilling. And it's really worth the extra effort that you're putting because it's not only for you but it's for your generation to come so it is worth the effort well worth it but what's the most important thing about carers coming to the uk it is the occupation code that's the only thing that determines can you bring dependents can you not it's not the job it's not a job title, it's not the duties, nothing. It's just the occupation code that the employer chooses to write. And I'm going to tell you the occupation code that is banned from bringing dependents. There are only two occupation codes, that's 6145 and 6146. Yes, crucial. If you receive your COS, as long as it's got that code, you cannot bring dependents to the UK. If you have an occupation code that has any other number, apart from the ones we've listed, you can't bring dependents to the UK. So I would like you, for me to know that you've gotten to this stage of the video, because I know that only 1% of people are going to get to this stage of this video and to get this information, which is crucial, obviously, for bringing dependents if you're wanting to move to the UK when it comes to visa sponsorship. Leave a comment in the comment section as in Melvis, I know the code. And I'm going to know that 
indeed he watched this video till this point because that is the only thing that determines who can bring dependents to the uk and who cannot if your occupation code is different which means anything else you can move your dependents beautifully to the uk without any obstacles without any objections and that's what it takes and so depending on the type of employer that you have you know what i mean you can you know speak to them obviously like i've said but it's one of those things i mean there are some things that are not for youtube but i will say you need to be wise you need to be smart you need to request don't be afraid to ask what you want don't be afraid to negotiate look one thing i've learned after 13 years in the uk is that i need to negotiate with the employers if they say melvin this is what we're offering you have the courage to say can you offer me this i'm grateful for what you're offering but can i have this because of my circumstances and you would be surprised that many employers will be able to accommodate your needs but carers are still bringing dependents to the uk as we speak meanwhile there are other people that are struggling scrounging and they're just like stuck no if you need to contact me check the comment section you see my contact details if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit the subscribe button check this out and i'll see you in this video right here